Hello you, welcome to Shriekism, our Halloween season here on Geekism, and we're cracking on with Planet Coaster today, working on our haunted house. We're actually going to be doing the queue interior, the, well, the interior bit of the queue, should I say, uh, but thank you first of all to all the feedback we got in the last episode about the crypt that we placed down here. Uh, you're right, it was too big, so we've uh, moved it out of the way, haven't got rid of it, because, you know, it may well be useful somewhere else. Not too sure, but you know, no point in deleting something just yet, because it may well come in handy later on. Uh, instead, we're going to go for something else here as a bit of a focal point. And it was a couple of people suggested this in the comments, so thank you if you did. Uh, they said that outside of uh, the Disney Haunted Mansions, they often have a, a carriage that has like a, a horse and carriage with an invisible horse. Basically, they have like these reins that are sort of, uh, you know, static and stuff. And I really like the idea of that, and I thought uh, we could have a go at building one. And then I remembered that we have these monsters sets. I think this, yeah, this one is the monsters, isn't it, this one? Um, Never used. I mean, maybe one or two of the pieces here. Uh, you can see the one I've placed down there is the complete one. That's obviously crazy and a bit tacky, and um, you know. But they have a lot of pieces that come separately. And I thought, you know what? I reckon we could build a half decent little uh, horse and carriage. Or carriage, I suppose, with a ghosty horse, uh, based out of these pieces, and it was actually quite fun to do. They they're, they are quite specific. These pieces, shall we say, uh, the doors there you'll see they're not they're not sort of perfect rectangles. They're a bit uh, higgledy piggledy based on the original size. So I'm not really 100% sure why you get them as separate pieces. Maybe. Um, it is just to sort of up the pace count a little bit and let people like me mess around with them, but uh, because they, they really kind of have a one a one use really because of those sizes of them. I mean, obviously, you know, it's Planet Coaster, you can turn anything upside down and stick it into a wall and it becomes something else, you know, uh, which is kind of what we've done here. We've created a bit of a, a back uh, part to it. And then using some of the original iron wheels there and a few other little bits and bobs, I end, we end up with quite a nice little uh, little horse and carriage, I think, but obviously without the horse, because the point is that you have an invisible horse, uh, so it's all spooky. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much for the few of you who suggested that. Also, thank you very much for the uh, the very warm comments about my grandmother. I really do appreciate that. And, um, yeah, doing pretty well now. Like I say, uh, had a bit of time off, but, uh, you know, she'll be back to, to normal from now on, I think. So, yeah, I do really appreciate all the uh, all the kind words, uh, both on YouTube and, uh, you know, Twitter and Discord and everything else as well. So there we go. There's the reins going into place. And uh, although this is actually not far off the height of the crypt, I think it's a lot more open and it just, and it sort of makes sense that it's outside the house. And it, I think it actually turns out really well. I'm really quite pleased with it. The only thing we do here is add a, a fence around it because obviously you don't want kids clambering all over it. I don't know why I'm yawning. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we had a bit of a fence around there to stop uh, naughty little sods climbing on it. Right. Uh, so we move on to the, uh, the bread and butter of the episode then, which is the interior queue. Uh, the queue here probably looks a bit random what we're doing here, but to be honest with you, I really wanted to kind of carry on with my homage to Jewel, which is the, uh, the haunted house at Alton Towers. So whilst we don't really build the same kind of layout, uh, the same kind of um, set pieces, the layout is very similar. Uh, there's a small room as you go in, that you walk around to the left, and it's kind of like a, a reception room, I guess, of a house. Not really much going on in there. And then you move into a secondary room, which is kind of a mix between a living room, uh, a sitting room, and, a, and a, a nursery, a children's nursery. So we kind of keep it more of a sort of living room, dining room, because, to be honest with you, we have the stuff. <laughs> uh, we have the, um, uh, the the seats and the and the chairs and, and settees and uh, sofas and things like that and bookcases and stuff. So we keep it more that sort of thing. Uh, the one in Alton Towers has uh, has a, a doll's house with a little girl in there who who um, they, they uses a um, oh what's the name of the guy? Does it somebody's ghost? Uh, I can't remember. Very sort of old technique of uh, projecting against a piece of glass to make something look uh, sort of semi-transparent. No, no, can't think of the name of the guy. Some somebody's ghost. I'm sure people in the comments will tell me. <laughs> um, this is one of them, and it also has a, a rocking horse that rocks by itself, and uh, you know, like a book being opened and things like that. So we kind of 
use the spirit of that area, pardon the pun, uh, but, but go for more of a, a traditional sort of uh, classic house. Uh, one thing I will point out again, though, is that the ride itself won't be going through a house like you would find in something like the Haunted Mansion. Uh, I really love, in the Hilton Towers version, the, the, the sort of juxtaposition of a, a haunted house as you enter it, it looks from the haunted house on the outside, the queue area is a haunted house, but then the ride itself is very much a ghost train. There are some slight themed areas, but for the most part, it is just a dark room with stuff in it. Uh, things jumping out at you, lights coming on, sounds, you know, typical sort of ghost train sounds, and I love that kind of juxtaposition. It's almost like the budget ran out by the time they got to the actual ride. Uh, here, I just googled creepy portrait. Um, there were some gifs and things that the, one of them, I think, is Edgar Allan Poe. The other one's just a young boy and an old lady. And um, I found spooky, uh, but the, uh, the spooky portraits were, you know, they were like zombies or uh, these ones that sort of change as you walk past them and things like that. And um, I wanted to really keep the the idea of Jewel, which is it's very much it isn't it isn't sort of obviously scary, especially this queue area. Really, especially this first room, it does just look like a really tired, dirty uh, manor house. So that was something I really wanted to try and keep up uh, through this area at least. So um, that's why we just went for sort of, sort of creepy paintings. I think the ones in all towers, they, the actual eyes are a little inset, so it kind of looks a little bit like they're following you, uh, which is quite cool. Uh, but other than that, they are just sort of uh, gaunt-looking figures as opposed to zombies and skeletons and things like that. Uh, so again, in here, I try and keep all of the, uh, the the horror theming relatively light and instead just go for a sort of uh, dirty, messy living area. There's a few skulls, a few pumpkins around, but that's mostly because um, you know we were looking for filler material for bookshelves and things like that. So we got the uh, the wall places in there. Now I could have gone and find something a little bit more, um, I don't know, subdued. But I actually quite like a couple of the Halloween, uh, the spooky pack, sorry, wallpapers. This one and the one we've used in the front room. I actually quite like. There's a third one that's all sort of like purples and blues, and it's made of little ghosts, which I think is a little bit over the top. But these two, I actually, I actually think they're quite good. They're just drab. They're a bit more sort of 60s retro than uh, than sort of proper haunted house uh, but I like them and uh, even though they're a little bit overbearing when they first go on once the uh, the rest of the room gets put together and also we look at it at night time which obviously you know you would write this this would be a relatively dark room it actually turns out really quite nice We've got a relatively low roof on this, so a lot of the set pieces like this fireplace and things like that, we have to be a little bit clever to squish them down a little because otherwise they would be pretty large actually. And a couple of the pieces we placed down in a little while actually end up really quite large, but I think they work because it's a little bit different. Uh, here in the Alton Towers version, as you walk in, like I say, there is there is a doll's house. Um, uh, I, I thought about making it, but I just we don't really have the pieces to do anything decent. Um, you know, even even with some real clever use of some of the smallest pieces, I don't think you'd really be able to get Doll's House furniture and things like that done. Uh, I then thought about maybe having a, a Doll's House interior on a screen and be, just building a sort of Doll's House around the screen. Um, but again, I just I wasn't really feeling the idea at all, really. So that's when I kind of decided to move away a little bit from the Alton Towers ride here and kind of go a little bit more just sort of generic haunted house and to be honest with you just kind of use some of the spooky stuff because I really didn't when spooky came out and when adventure came out to be honest I was still in the very early stages of Pinewood Hills um, so we were still using very generic stuff and keeping it really light and really cheap uh, and neither uh, spooky nor adventure had uh, the budget really you know Pinewood Hills just wouldn't have had that budget at the time now we've moved on a little bit and the, the park has become a little bit higher budget overall and also you know as, as the park progresses through the years as well it gets a slightly higher budget but overall we wouldn't have used that sort of stuff when it first came out uh, so it's nice to kind of go in and just kind of play around with it properly we did a couple of little haunted house builds when it came out just sort of like a few live streams and stuff here i thought we've got some we've got some swords of the fireplace i thought how good it would be to tell a little bit of a story here i'm pretty sure disney has a word for that i can't remember what it is it's something like um uh, ambient storytelling or something so we've actually taken one of the swords out of the display and plunged it through the sofa plunged it through the seat as if there is uh, there was at one point somebody sitting there I, I did then consider maybe putting a skeleton in the chair but again I thought Do you know what that's a little bit too on the nose for this area this still very much is just a kind of creepy looking house here uh, I'm literally just going through and trying to find stuff to, to fill shelves to fill space on the ground and um, again the problem is most of the point most of the time stuff is really 
quite large. It wasn't until I fell on this hippo and I was like, oh, we could make some um, some taxidermy hunter trophy kind of things. I'm not a massive fan of these in real life. I think it's, you know, I think killing animals is, is you know, for anything other than food is quite disgusting. Um, so I'm not into this trophy hunting at all. But I did think, do you know what? This is a sort of kind of slightly creepy but not necessarily spooky stuff that would actually work quite well so we do a hippo and a crocodile they're a little big mostly because the animals themselves are a little big uh, the hippo just comes in one size the crocodile does have a small size that's the small one we're using now so you can see uh, so you know some of the issues that the planko scale has uh, that that is a small crocodile i think if that crocodile was in, was in real life it would be probably one of the largest crocodiles in the world uh, but i think actually once they've sunk in they look pretty sweet and it's just something a little bit different uh, i don't think i've seen anyone do it before uh, if i have it i, I can't remember I, I, when i came up with it i actually sat for a second and thought have i have I seen this and I'm re recalling it or is it, is it something I haven't actually seen before? And like I say, I don't think I have. Uh, adding the roof on, a few slight changes need to happen, mostly just with the window there, just all needs to be pulled down. Again, I want to keep quite a low roof on this and I'm purposefully using quite a thin uh, pathway, just a two meter path and these really chunky wooden fencing, um, mostly to try to replicate the Alton Towers one because they have, uh, theirs is actually completely solid but they have big wooden uh, chunky fencing between there uh, but also I wanted this sort of almost like a claustrophobic feel to the whole space uh, and once it's lit up dark I think it actually turned out pretty well, just a couple of P lights there to uh, pick out areas but here we go, I thought I'd show you this in the dark and wow i think that looks really good i'm really happy with there this is starting to turn out uh, next episode we'll actually start the ride i think we're going to have two episodes this is probably going to run over halloween now because of the week away but i don't really mind i'm really enjoying myself um so we're going to have uh, two episodes probably doing the ride like i say nothing it's not going to be huge it's not going to be major major ride it's going to be using the uh, the ghost train uh, lots of jump scares lots of silly things lighting up a couple of ideas i want to try out with stuff but uh, we'll see how it goes thank you so much for watching hope you've enjoyed it if you have you can give us a like it really does help out the channel and if you're not already don't forget to subscribe any thoughts queries or suggestions you can pop them down in the comments fancy chat you can find me on twitter i'm at john t sparrow and if you'd like to join in with the geek is a community you can do so over on our geek is a discord server you'll find the link for that in the description thanks very much for watching i'll see you in the next one